Good morning, folks. We've got space weather afoot as the sunspot cycle keeps ramping up. We've also got looks at larger solar storms in the past, the deep mantle, and cosmic rays. The main feature on the sun today is on the north with the bright active region that released a small C-class solar flare yesterday. There was a CME associated with it. The eruption was triggered by the northern plasma filament, lifting and releasing, widely shifting magnetic situations in the active region to the south and driving the eruption of plasma, which is only visible on the Stereo A coronagraph at this early hour, Earth off to the right if you recall in this view, and that's the CME likely to clip Earth about two days after the last CME, which is expected to clip Earth tomorrow. Neither is terribly strong, just a step up the ladder in the cycle. Magnetospheric reverberations and continued enhanced solar wind streams led to more geomagnetic storm conditions overnight. We are expecting those to begin to wane here soon and will have waned fully by the time the first CME arrives. I want to give a quick alert to the Texas-Oklahoma border and then approaching Arkansas in the late night hours. The low driving the latest snowstorm in the west is allowing Gulf Energy to integrate onto the southeast wind convergence and will drive strong storms tonight. Eyes on them. Also eyes on the seismicity, lot of factors in play in the coming days, and so blot echoes, however you track the global electric circuit, and the outgoing longwave radiation will be key location forecasting measures. By the way, congratulations to QuakeWatch.net users Rebecca Jo Steelman and Lester on having excellent runs recently with their forecasting success. Couple quick notes here on papers studying the Carrington event of 1859, suggesting that at the extreme solar storm levels, the normal DST index is less useful to ascertain the true power of the event. Then they look back further in time to 1582 and more evidence from Europe of a three-day major solar storm that would have rivaled the Carrington event in power. These studies on the sun's smallest super flare level events complements the longer cycle, larger flares. The Carrington level events seem to occur every few hundred years while the higher level super flares on the sun are thousands of year scale events. And it turns out that when they look at super flares on other stars, considering that we've had none from the sun in the time of modern science, they find that they're merely scaled up versions of solar flares from the sun, just associated with supermassive active regions. This eliminates nearly all doubt as to the mechanism of both those stellar flares and the rare solar super flares on our local star. It just takes a lucky or rather unlucky super spot to develop the magnetic complexity required for that super flare. Up next, it was March 15th that we went over this paper in Nature Geoscience among others associated with the conductivity of Earth's interior. Here's another one complementing that on super ionic states in the deep mantle. Folks, this continues to demonstrate that the homogeneous concentric shell idea of Earth's interior is not only wrong, but it hides the true axis of space energy induction all the way to the core. The LLSVPs and the conductivity profiles of the deep allow for a completely integrated system from the sun to the magnetosphere and including everything down to the center of the planet. Last but not least, we're looking at cosmic rays. Cosmic rays can be from the galaxy, beyond, or from the sun, and they are the things that take out ozone. Sunlight helps to make it, but particle energy destroys it, and the confirmation of these mechanisms forces a look back to 2011 at one of our original worries about the weakening magnetic field of Earth. Cosmic rays are going to have greater access to the atmosphere, and from there, its irradiation and climate and even magmatic shift as the highest energy rays do penetrate to the mantle. That terrible picture coming together in full. Folks, the long-term units and founding membership of Observer Ranch is half full. We are approaching the end of initial engineering and planning and will enter approvals to break ground phase in the coming weeks. Whether you have donated to the project, are one of the long-term observers or are hoping to be, or whether our fate is to merely shake hands one day when the campground is finished, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.